Hi, it's Roman, founder and CEO of EarthAI. We are a high-performance explorer for clean energy metals. Today I'll talk about Sandover Project. It's our alliance with Taiwan Limited. Uh, they are a critical metals company based in Darwin, Northern Territory. Today I'm heading to Alice Springs to work on the Sandover project with Steven, our partner. We're leaving Alice Springs. Here's Steven. I'm Roman. Uh, we're heading out to the Sandover project. The car is loaded with all the gear. Uh, we have government and media following us in the other two cars. It's going to be real fun. Yeah, to fight the tires. I really love Northern Territory. It's uh, just a beautiful place. The nature is amazing. Geology is extremely interesting and unexplored. Uh, you're camping out in the middle of nowhere, hours from any nearby city or town. Most of the area is covered by very large pastoral leases, and there's nothing out there. There's a couple of tracks, and other than that, it's just remote wilderness, um, and we love it. So Taiwan reached out to us earlier this year uh, saying they have this huge amount of land in Central Australia. Uh, it's like 600 by 300 kilometers and it's extremely prospective for lithium but very, very unexplored. This is perfect for us. The project is around four hours from Alice Springs. You take the highways, then you take the dirt roads. The scenery is just amazing. You have the beautiful, beautiful sun. We arrive just after the sunset. Uh, but our geologists were already, already waiting for us. <laughs> and with us, we brought this massive bag of lamb chops. We grilled those bad boys, we had fun talking to the government and the media crew, and then we had an early night, and we slept under the stars. So next morning, we're waking up before sunrise. The desert is quiet. But then what breaks that quietness is the sweet sound of starting the kettle. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, first thing in the morning. And grilling some bacon and eggs. And having a great breakfast. What is that? Is that? Look at that. Oh, the money shot. <laughs> you put some cheese in there? Mm. Ready to take the group shot? Yes, I am. <laughs> Good. After that, uh, we did the shooting uh, for the government for about two, three hours. Uh, we escorted the government team uh, out to the public road, and we went uh, and set off to check the targets. Every morning we have a, what's called a toolbox meeting, and we look at what targets we have uh, that we haven't checked yet. We review the data and results from the previous couple of days, and we pick the priorities for the day. This is a perfect example of Greenfield's exploration. It's so unexplored, it's so remote. Partially, it is so unexplored because it's so remote, and there's no much historical data here. This is a perfect perfect conditions for our AI system and our process was you know, predicting, mapping, and drilling, because it's actually better data. <laughs> uh, in a desert environment, we get better data. Uh, we can go straight to where there are signs of mineralization and study it, and we get this advantage of like, nobody knows that it's there, any minerals are there, but with our software, it sort of lights up. So the way it works, we have the coordinates where to go, uh, we have a map, or two. Yes. The first geologist in front uh, goes out and scouts, does the geologic observations, does the hammering of the rocks. Is that it? <coughs> it 
shoveling if we're doing soil samples, identifies rocks, minerals. The geologist behind him is trailing back with a portable XRF analyzer, so he got instant chemical data and also sample bags, so he also collects all the samples. The XRF is just like a tool that gives you rapid infield data. <laughs> How's it going, Joe? Uh, pretty high silica. High what? <laughs> silica. Aluminum and iron too, but no calcium, so. Okay. Yeah. But you can't report these results. You have to collect the sample, send them to the lab, and the lab, you know, crushes and grinds the rocks and gives you actual reliable data on the average composition of that soil or rock. So, thank you. Off to the lab. We test, you know, one or two, maybe three targets a day, depends on their size, and try to find a if there is mineralization, and two is find out the extent of it. Once we find something, and because we have this instant yeah. data from the portable XRF, uh, we go and map out the size and we try to understand, get a bit of an extra idea of what it's made of. And on this trip, um, we actually found some prospects and we found them when Steven was there, uh, the chief geologist of Taiwan. One for copper and four for lithium. These are very early stage, but they're very exciting and we can't wait to come back there and study them in detail. Covered a few targets, the lithium 250 target, that was great to see. Uh, the way everything was striking there, so we were able to identify a few localised trends which hopefully translate into regional trends, So, and hopefully that'll help us identify uh, when we do find some LCT pegmatites, which are obviously the main target. So we're in the right field, and yeah, we just got to keep covering the ground and keep doing what we're doing. I'm sure we'll find something. Several years back, when we were building our system, uh, we started going on these trips to validate our predictions. To date, we have spent over 800 days in the field. Whenever we run into issues, we um, had to go back into town, and there was a minimum of four or five hours, basically takes a whole day to come in. If you're, something breaks down, you don't have enough food or water, uh, so we started you know, figuring out how we can solve this and make it more efficient. And now, our geologists are able to spend 20 days out in the remote desert. Welcome to the tour of Earth AI campsite. Go and show me. Okay, starting with Roman's tent. Nice and green for the camouflage. And then we have the geologist tents, where it's two rooms partitioned. And then we have the geo trailer. where we have all of our amenities, the fridge, the freezer, <laughs> the, the water tank, 600 litres. <laughs> Jordan, that was a shower. Uh, showers are great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what's, what's better than a shower after a long field day? A beer. Near, name, yeah, name 10 things <laughs> right now. And they also have this redundancy that you need. So, for example, in this trip, we had a flat tire. Tell us what happens to you. Oh, we got a flat tire. We're just gonna pop it up, get the jack under there, get on our way. We have two spares. We also have tire seal and tire repair kit. So whatever happens with tires, we're, we're sorted. We, even if it's ripped, we can plug it. You done this recently? Yeah. Not more than a week and a half ago. And also, we're camping out in the middle of nowhere, and we always try to do the best for our people, but, but we're still learning. On this trip, the conditions were extremely windy. Uh, it hasn't been that windy before, and our tents we use now uh, didn't perform really well. They did before, but not this time. So Jonathan's tent fell over overnight, and uh, in the morning, well, he wasn't a very happy camper. Good morning, Jonathan. Oh, good morning, Roman. How was your sleep? Oh, I've had many better sleeps than that. Uh, yes, yeah, so our tent in the middle of the night decided to collapse in on us. I don't know if you can see over there. Um, 
and I got out and, and fixed it and kind of got it back situated and it lasted about maybe 15 minutes and then <laughs> came back in. Um, What's wrong with it? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, there's only so much I could work with in the middle of the night. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I, didn't dis- I didn't dissect the problem. <laughs> I was like, do I have breathing room with this flap in my face? Okay, it's just above. I think I can <laughs> get back to sleep. <laughs> when you're exploring in the desert, especially in this green tools environment, you never know what you're going to find. Uh, yes, we found five prospects, but it turns out not far from Mark campsite, there's a real meteorite crater. So we're excited about rocks, but these are not just rocks, these are rocks from space. It's exciting squared. Rocks all crater. Yeah, look at it. Yeah. It's really deep. So we went and checked it out. It's the size of a football field. It was really fun. So what's next? Uh, Well, going back to these prospects, mapping them out in detail, planning some drilling. We really only barely scratched the surface of the Sandover project. Uh, There's so much more land we haven't even visited, and there's great targets over there. Taiwan has been a great partner this year. They're really an emerging leader in the resources industry in the Northern Territory. Uh, We can't get enough of the Sandover project and we're looking out to the future. We're hoping to find a lot of critical metal deposits together.